Hey everyone, welcome to Parents Against Alienation. My name is AJ and I'm looking forward to talking to you today about the topic of parental alienation and specifically what are some of the things that alienated parents experience, what are some of their losses that they go through, and the um, things that they wish that they could share with their alienated children. So before I jump into that, I got a couple of caveats I got to throw out there. One is that I wanted to make this channel be more perfect before I launched it. And I decided to throw in the towel on that and just to get content out there because I felt it was that important that I not wait because I knew if I waited to try to get perfect, it would probably not happen. Two is that... I'm right in the middle of my parental alienation journey. So it's been going on for years. And so there's going to be a lot of videos that I need to put out there to catch you up to where we are today. Um, and then there's going to be some videos after this. But I wanted to start because of two reasons. One, I need to do this for my own healing. I think it'll be very therapeutic. And two, I really believe that there's a lot of people out there who are going through similar situations and need a community to go to to get help. And we're going to be real here. This is not, we are not perfect. I have not figured it out. I am still making mistakes. Some of the things in my head are still off, but that's just the way this is going to be. This channel is going to be real and raw and go ahead and correct me in the comments if you think that some of the things I say are off, um, but that's how this is going to be on my channel. Um, I want to start off with a little bit of background. So um, over the last month or so, Mother's Day was around Father's Day was here and so was my birthday and I didn't get a phone call a text message a birthday card a present or a well wish from any of my children I've got three of them that are well two that are alienated and three from that same co-parent and so you know there's feelings of pain that I feel when I have um, basically no recognition by any of these children that I'm somebody of value in their lives. Um, the other thing I want to set as a framework is that I became alienated with my oldest child over three years ago and then the youngest child over two years ago. And during that time frame, I had no contact. I mean, we're talking pretty severe alienation. The kids had stopped seeing me entirely and they'd stopped calling me mom and they intentionally said that I was not their mother anymore. And so we're talking really severe alienation here. And I know there's all levels of alienation and I am not precluding anyone who has lesser forms of it or greater forms of it. This is for everyone who experiences this. So some of the losses that I have experienced are, you know, one of them is pretty obvious, just the daily interactions with that child. I didn't get to be a part of their homework, their friends, their school life, the ups and the downs um, having Sunday dinners with them, all of that was gone. Um, I didn't get to have them around for holidays. Again, like I mentioned, there was no connection with them on Mother's Day, Father's Day, my birthday, any of the holidays, nothing. Um, some of the other losses is that, you know, my children are of dating age, they're teenagers. And so they get to start dating and 
shopping for prom dresses and, you know, talking about their dates and their crushes, coming home after a date and having the, the download with their parents. And I have not been able to be involved in any of that for these two children. Um, going like my mind thinks ahead all the time. And I have thought so many times that I probably will never be able to be in my grandchildren's lives. And that hurts pretty bad. Um, so, you know, I'm faced with that loss that, that I won't have a normal relationship with my grandchildren if things continue the way that they are. We hope they'll change, but alienation is pretty difficult to overcome. Um, I have no idea if I'll be invited to high school graduations, to colleges, to their, you know, attending college, to their weddings. And so even though these things haven't happened yet, um, there's going to be some form of generational trauma that I expect will be the case that, that either I won't be involved in their lives at all, or, and that would be by the preference of, of the child, not me, because my preference would be that I would be involved. Um, or there will be some form of, oh, that's the grandma that's weird and we don't have much to do with her. And so there will be some form of judgment, um, that, that the grandchild will have against me. And all of this built on a lie actually, and just hatred. And so, so that's, that is the loss. One of the bigger losses that I am experiencing, or I, I haven't experienced it yet, but I anticipate will, there will be some form of it. Um, one of the most difficult things that I experience is when people around me ask how the kids are doing. And I always cringe and think, oh, here we go again, because I don't know. There's no answers. I literally know as much about my child as the person who just asked me, which is basically nothing. Because again, like I said, I had no contact with these kids <clears throat> and they wouldn't let me be in involved in their lives at all. And I was precluded from being in their, involved in their lives from, from the other parent. And so, so I, I have nothing to answer. And so I would find myself in these situations when people would ask how my kids are doing. And I would find myself kind of like guessing about what they're doing or feeling, um, and kind of stumbling over my words to the point that I was explaining why I was stumbling over my words. And then that would get into the, well, it's because of parental alienation and the ex. And, the, and what I'd find myself doing is talking about decades worth of information that would fill a 300 page book or more and trying to summarize that in like 30 seconds, which is impossible to do. It's just impossible for the other person to even understand. And so eventually it got to the point when someone would ask, I decided that I no longer needed to answer the question, that I would just say something to the effect of, you know, I'm not sure, but I don't really want to talk about this. So let's talk about something else. Um, and that was kind of the best way for me to handle these situations when others would ask me how my kids were doing because it was not helpful for me. It just reminded me of the terrible situation and how I was, I'm sorry for the bumping. I'm sorry for the totally imperfect video here. Um, but again, I'm anxious to get this out there versus making it perfect. So it was painful enough to live and to have to relive that and have to try and come up with answers when there were none. Um, I finally decided it was, that was one of those things where I just decided that I didn't need to answer. I didn't, I didn't have an answer for them. So I was not going to try and make up an answer. 
Um, and the last thing that was kind of a major loss for me is financial. And I won't go into any details on this, but because it's worthy of its own video, but the financial costs of dealing with this through the court system is prohibitive. And um, so that leads me into how I, what was going on for me physically and emotionally. So it kind of was a process for me. Initially, it was just the loss. The immediate loss was crippling. I'd find myself curled up in the fetal position multiple times, just like literally bawling my eyes out, hyperventilating uncontrollably, not knowing how to handle the physical pain that I was experiencing. But just to get it out in, in an incredibly vulnerable way. And, and you know, that, that helped in the beginning, but then it kind of evolved into once I recognized and knew we were dealing with parental alienation and that there, it was, it was not just some random thing. Like there was some sinister behavior going on. Suddenly I became really two things, very I should say three things. It was an aha moment like, oh my gosh, it makes sense. Finally, it felt like answers were there and that I understood why. Two, I became very upset at my ex and the and what he had caused all of us, and particularly the children. And three, I wanted to save the kids. Okay, so that went on for some time. When I... Um, realized that there was more to it than just, oh, my child is upset at me and like very, very upset, right? There was actually some psychological abuse that had happened to cause them to get to that point of rejecting me, the alienated parent, the targeted parent. And, um, and so I wanted to rescue them from this psychological damage that they were going through because they're my child and that's what mothers do is they they protect and rescue their child from dangers and so that went on for some time and we and we pursued a lot of the things that you can pursue in the court system to try and and get the child the help they need get the parent the help they need and also enlighten the the professionals, the court order therapists and the guardians involved into showing them why we were where we were at and what needed to happen. Okay, so a lot of problem solving going on in my mind, like, oh, I'm going to solve this problem and it's going to be better. And then we get towards where I'm at right now over the last month or so. And the financial hit hard. And the court although they recognized the um, psychological damage that had happened by the abusive parent, they didn't change the situation. And that is, again, a whole nother, and that's worthy of its own video, so I will post a video about that. But um, basically, by that time, it was, by the time the court weighed in and with their ruling, I was at a point where I had done everything I could and there was nothing more to be done. And so it became about preservation at that point. And um, like I mentioned, one of my losses was financially. And it was a lot of money that I poured into this journey. Tens of thousands, to give some idea. And by that time, because I had already suffered the loss of the relationships with the children, and then I suffered the loss of the court allowing it to continue repeatedly. By that time, it was a preservation of, I got to save my finances. I can't lose that too. And, and there was major pain. <laughs> that sounded weird. 
there was major disappointment and pain involved in recognizing how much money I'd spent and how much money was lost through this journey. And so, um, you know, because of all of that, there's a lot of ups and downs that you have. And some of those feelings cause you to want to like, just go grab your children and give them a hug. Um, some of the times I just wanted them to know like, my gosh, I understand you. I have unconditional love for you. You always have a place for you here in my home. I just want to like live life. I just want to go out and do the normal things like go to the movies or go to a concert or just have dinner and chat and visit and have a good time, you know. And then sometimes I feel, you know, something in between like guilt for some of the mistakes I made or wishing I could go back and change some of the things that I did in the hopes that maybe if I did this, then we could have avoided this whole situation. Um, But then that's me realizing I just, I can't control the situation and I have to accept what my decisions have been leading up to this point and that it probably wouldn't have mattered if I went back and changed what I did and how I acted and how I responded in each of these moments, it probably wouldn't have mattered. Um, And then there's times, uh, a lot of times, and this is one of the overriding, like consistent, most prevailing feelings is confused. What happened? Why? It doesn't make sense. And I think part of why I experienced the confusion of this doesn't make sense is because the child also doesn't really know what happened. Like they can't explain. With a, you know, this loss due to alienation, it's the child choosing to stay away and reject the other parent. That is just another layer of loss that only happens in these cases of parental alienation because um, they have not only the loss of just the child in the relationship, but it's also the character of the other person has to be assassinated, you know, and that's painful. Um, Some of the other things I'll just quickly touch on is that, you know, I've had nightmares, anxiety, depression, Obviously, the stress is incredible and um, incredible in a bad way. Um, But, you know, one of the things that's probably the most difficult to deal with is not knowing how they really are. Like, you don't get to see them. You don't get to to check in and um, you just hope they're okay. When you fall asleep at night, you don't know where they're at. You assume they're okay. Maybe they're crying themselves to sleep. Maybe they're lost. Maybe they got kidnapped. For heaven's sake, I don't know because I haven't seen them. So it's uh, it's really real. I mean, it is a severe amount of um, psychological disturbance that can happen. You know, one of the other things that's super hard is that the body and mind crave connection and contact. And when it doesn't get that relational contact that it needs, something dies and that connection becomes severed. Then I feel like I want to solve the problem and prove to the court, convince the professionals involved and enlighten the alienated child as to what the reality of the situation is. And, and a lot of that's because of the dichotomy of what I'm hearing and experiencing is that, is that I know it's not true. And I want to help the court see the truth. And so what I wish I could tell my alienated child, if I knew they would really understand, is that I love them unconditionally that 
I wish they knew I sacrificed so much for them. I wish they knew that because I feel like they would understand, you know, so much. And, and I don't know how else to say it, but then they would know that they were wrong about me, you know. Um, I, w- I would want to share with them that the basis for which they left me and rejected me was false. And that it was also abusive, that they were abused. Um, I would want to under I would want them to know that I understand better now why this was so difficult for them, that they don't need to explain it, that I accept them unconditionally and that they are loved and accepted. And I'd want to help them understand that their other parents said and did things that caused this child to reject me. And that's why we're all struggling. And that, that they were, what they went through was abuse. So, you know, in summary, this loss is tragic. Parental alienation is terrible. And the loss of the child parent relationship is traumatizing and seriously people recovering from this is no joke I mean there's so many layers to peel back and understand and when you feel like you understand it then something else crops up that you have to understand and then you go back to the original thing that you thought you understood and then you're relearning it and and these things cause like intense battling emotions in your head and where you're feeling optimistic or hopeful or um, understanding and then you're feeling angry and resentful and full of pain and but because I'm you know the adult I have to be the one to set the example and I you know and at least for this week. So this week is when my daughter comes to visit. So the way I'm going to handle it this week, because I know I'm going to have up and down emotions, is that I'm going to set a plan for the week. It'll include, you know, activities and just daily stuff that we need to do. And I'm going to live it. And then I'm going to invite my daughter into it. And I'm going to hope that she feels comfortable And that I feel comfortable in just living what the plan is. And when something happens inside of me that causes me to go into that place of resentment, I'm going to restrain myself. And it's going to take a lot, but I'm going to restrain myself from saying anything that might be me trying to to enlighten her or open her eyes to things and I'm just gonna escape into my room go get a massage on my massage chair do some mindfulness and meditation reset my mind and I'm gonna leave you with this that the the most important thing this week for me is to remember that the best revenge on someone who has abused or wronged me is to make my life wildly successful and joyful to turn those negative feelings into something that is amazingly positive one because that will make me happier and more content in knowing that my life was not sacrificed to this this evil that continues to try to suck every joyful thing out of my life and two because um in parental alienation is well known that the the abusive parent is um pretty much always a narcissist and they can't stand to see their victims happy so again The goal this week is to remember that um, the best kind of revenge to have in these situations is just to divert negative energy and turn it into something 
really positive and uplifting and to make my life as successful and joyful as possible. And that is all I have for you today. Please like and subscribe. And more importantly, make a comment in the community below. I want to create a community where we can be raw, real, and, um, and, and helpful for each other. And so with that, I will talk to you guys soon in a new video. Bye.